Hello and welcome to Thyrus Web Development Tips and Tutorials. This video is a basic guide for customizing Tailwind CSS based on your project. For me personally, 90-95% to of the times the available Tailwind classes have been perfect and sufficient for my project needs. Only 5-10% to of the times I felt the need for additional classes or different styles. So let's see how to get started with this. I have Tailwind CSS installed in this project already or without post CSS and I'm using a custom CSS file in the SRC folder. In the package.json file, I have this build script. If you need help installing and setting up Tailwind Leathers for a simple project exactly like this, you can watch the video linked above. In the index.html file, I have a simple h1 tag and this is what the output looks like. Now, let's do npx Tailwind CSS in it to generate the tailwing.config.js file. Here is our file. This gives us the basic structure that we need. Now when we talk about customizing Tailwind CSS, there are two ways you could do this. Number one, extending the existing styles. Number two, overriding the existing styles. Let's talk about extending first. For example, let's go to the documentation of Tailwind and search for padding utility classes. We have all these classes available. 0.125 REM, 0.25 REM in smaller increments initially and then in increments of 1 REM later, like this. This is usually sufficient for most layouts. But for some reason, you might need a padding of exactly 3.25 REM, which is 13 pixels for which there is no utility class. Of course, you could use custom CSS in addition to Tailwind classes in this CSS file, only for those elements, but then you're not exercising the power of Tailwind completely. We can easily customize it to our needs by adding additional values to our tailwind.config.js file. Since we need all these existing values of padding classes already, and we only need to extend it additionally to include our own tool. Within the theme block, within the extend block here, we can use the padding property and give additional values like this, 13, 3.25 REM. Note that the actual class will be P-13, but here the value to be specified is just 13. Now you can add this class to your code. Let's see p-13 is already suggested by the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense plugin. You must add this extension if you don't have it already. But for this padding to take effect, we need to build once. So npm run build. But before this, make sure you have the build script in your package.json file. Watch the above video if you don't have the setup already. Okay, now we have our styles.css generated. Let's look at the browser and refresh. Inspect element to see that the new padding has taken effect. Yeah, here it is, p13 padding 3.25 rem. You can similarly add as many additional values separated by commas like this. Say 15, 3.75 rem and so on. You can also do this for any other property similarly. Let's look at another example. Search for min height. Here if you look, there are only three values, zero, full and screen. But if you want a specific value like say 20 REM, you can add that. Click on customizing and look at the syntax. We need to use min height with h capital and no dash in between. So copy this, go back after padding separated with a comma, add min height and within this uh, eight, this should be 80, 20 REM. This is just following the same convention and let's try use this in our code now. Surround this h1 with div tags with a class min height, you can see that min height 80 is already suggested. Add this and to be able to see the effect, let's add a background color 
of yellow to 100. We need to build this again because we changed the config file. npm run build. Now look at the browser. Refresh and inspect element. Let's look at the div class. Yes, min height 80, 20 rem has been added here. So this is how you go about extending the existing configuration. But what if you want to override the existing styles? For example, you want to change the default serif and sans serif fonts. In the documentation, let's look at customization configuration. And right here, you can see that this is done by adding font family property within theme. So it goes here and not within the extend section because we are changing the existing styles and not extending them. Let's actually implement this. Copy these four lines and paste them within your tailwind.config.js within the theme. Let's change this to Lato and this to Lora. Let's import these from Google Fonts. Fonts.google.com Search for Lato select regular select the style then search again for lora click on this select the regular style and import copy the import statement and let's paste it here in our custom css file above everything else now this should work we just need to build once. So npm run build. It's done. Let's check the output. Refresh. And you can see that the font has changed. Uh, if you inspect element, h1, go to computed styles. And you can see the font family is now Lato. Let's also check for the serif font. Add another h2 tag maybe h2 class font serif let's just add a font sans here also and type this is fun now check the browser refresh and yes you can see that font family is lora here so this is how you change the existing configuration but only one thing you need to be careful about is that when you are adding properties to the team here, it overrides the entire default values for that property. So if you just add sans and leave out serif, Tailwind no more recognizes the font serif class. So let's remove this and see what happens. Build once, npm run build. And now let's look at the browser. You see, this is also sans because font serif is no more recognized. So whenever you are changing the existing configuration, make sure that you go to the documentation and verify all the values that are existing and override all of them. All right, have fun building with Tailwind. Thank you for watching. Hit a like and share this video ahead. If you enjoyed watching this, don't forget to subscribe below and turn on the notifications so you won't miss a single video from Tyrus.